Pope or some bishop, whatever. The bishop, I think, uh, did so <laughs> just throw an Aliens 2 reference in there for no reason. Uh, I, th I think There's always a reason. They, there is always a reason. I love the movie. It, it's one of those things where they do video now. They're doing video sermons. That piece of shit with the big arena that he wouldn't let people in during the... Oh, God, Joel Olstein. Joel Olstein. God, I hate him. He did one, the first one ever, 100,000 or more than 100,000 people tuned into it. I'm like, what the fuck? Let's make this the compound ministries. Was it just... Uh, we could. If Let's you do make that. So much... Tax exempt. And we fucking just start talking about, you know, Jesus. Yeah, look at this. Oh Is Lord. this him doing his... Yeah. Uh, you want to turn it up? Great country. And Joel Osteen is joining us live from Lakewood. There Look in at this fucking freak. Houston, mm -hmm. Praise Jesus. Between Commander He's Kelly and now this commander. <laughs> oh, yeah. A face right here. Place to be. Joel is the place to be. It goes against the God It is so good. Four million people, Joel. Four million. Four million, four really million people. Okay. I was a little off. Lakewood. You, look, you do love an audience, but you didn't have one there in person how was that for you god miss. you know robin it was really different you know i've never done that in the 20 years i've been ministering so only I just time i use you know video conferencing is when i have seats, the cam but, girls uh, up and i'm i'm jacking off but, uh, and by b girls i mean boys yes boys by girls i mean boys <laughs> <laughs> so here's joel let me hear a little more joel we still worship and we can gather in different ways and we have a Look clip from yesterday's equipment. service where you shared the powerful message that chaos can be a place of power. Let's take a look. Well, God You're not tells close to your miracle only when everything is calm and peaceful. Sometimes it's the opposite. That globe when would it's chaotic, probably pay for a fucking house for people. When you're tempted to panic, it's a, it's live a, afraid, that means your miracle is on It's a golden calf. It yeah. really is. Mm. And, and uh, Mr. Olsen, we see a faith is guiding Olsen. so many people right now in yeah. these challenging times. We've seen in Ohio, they have drive-in services. We've seen a drive-through confessional. So why is, it, why is it important for people to lean on their faith right now? Oh. You Jesus. know, Michael, when, when things get out of our control, when we, we can't handle it Sitting necessarily on our own, boner. many people like myself and people of faith, we, we turn to our faith because we need something stronger than ourselves. So I think when you turn to your faith and you yeah. realize, God, you're still in control, this is not a surprise to you. But That's didn't he bring this? It gives you the peace. And, uh, didn't God do this? Difficult times really I don't understand that part. Any religious guy that could sit down and answer all of my fucking questions about religion, I will, I will worship and pray and be one of the best religious people ever. If you could answer me that whole thing, why is there even a Shriners Hospital? Uh, because uh, kid, why would God make kids with no legs or give them cancer and, 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 and unleash a plague on earth and then people pray to him to stop it? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, people say, what would you ask God when you met him? And I would just walk in and go like, what? What the fuck, And I would leave it there. I'd right. Go, you know what I'm asking. What? And if you don't. Oh, oh, well, that's the devil. No, I don't think yeah. it is the devil. I think, I think God is supposed to put all these things in place to teach us some shit. What a cruel master. Like, what like, a cruel man. If you treated your pets like this, like God treats people, you'd be arrested. For animal cruelty. Yeah, he's like, look, you guys think I'm an architect. Uh, I got to be honest. I'm just a stoner living in my parents' basement. I tried yeah. to make a watch, which was you guys. Yeah. Sorry, just running out of control, and uh, I haven't looked at it in years. Yeah, I forgot about shelf. you guys, quite frankly. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I put you somewhere a few millennia ago, and I totally forgot. I have to apologize. What's been going on? To be honest, one night I was drunk, and I made spiders, and I was like, have you seen these fucking things? Yeah. And I, I'm like, what's wrong with me? And I just didn't want to make shit anymore. Like, God is in charge of tragedy, right? Like, like they say he's got a purpose, and God works in mysterious He'll ways. So when someone dies in your family or something, you, you go like, well, I'm sure there was a reason yeah. for that. If you, if you took uh, your pet hamster, right, and you put him in a little car, and you zoom it into the fucking wall. And it's just blood and dead hamster. And, and, and you go, you post it online and go, look, look what I did to the hamster. You'd be arrested for animal cruelty and yeah. everyone would hate you. They wouldn't pray to you that, and try to figure out why you did it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, please make the other hamsters feel better before you thrust them into a fucking wall. It, 
it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> None of it makes sense. I need answers. I really do want to talk to a lot of religious people, and it's not as a knock. It's because I really want to get down to why did you choose this? Yeah. What do you really believe? What have you seen? Because I believe in ghosts. I've seen shit. Like, I honestly do believe there's Ooh. something. Spirit. And But I do. I do. Like, I just don't understand the logic that you can find in it. Yeah. And, like, even him, he's like, I knew that right then God wanted me to get online and have four million viewers and each have them pay one dollar right and pay and, money and, and i had and i i couldn't believe i made four million dollars in an hour and see all those people but in the booth there <laughs> one of those people is working the camera and the rest are just taking taking the orders taking yeah. the money down <laughs> going right to my bank <laughs> goes right to the joel osteen account i would love to send the money to them jewish starving women but unfortunately yeah. they've not accepted christ they think that christ was a traitor so I can't give him any money. You don't understand religion. You know what I don't understand? After taxes. I, don't even know what it means. Yeah, I, I don't even have to claim anything. You know what I had on that $4 million I made? $4 million. Isn't that something? It's all mine. Yeah, it was yours. I, it's all mine. And I don't have to pay nothing. Nope. Because I just said I believe in this what shit. What a cock. And then the government went, well, guess it's religion. How did they figure that out? Was that a separation of church and state kind of Had loophole? Where it's like, if a church gives the government money, then it's not separate? Because what a scam. Like, do they not even pay property tax? They've got Nothing. Pay it's crazy. Like, like, they're tax exempt. It's fucking mental. They get free money. Free money. Everyone else has to pay half of what they make to some form of taxes over the course of the year. They get to keep everything. It, it just you, doesn't make like sense. Like you come and you light a candle for the deceased. Yeah. You have to leave like five bucks. You don't have to leave anything, but then it's like, hey. Then it doesn't take. Yeah, it's like you want your wish to come true. Right. What's You're wishing well. There? It's a fucking wishing well. It is. You're exactly. throwing it into a fountain at the mall. Yeah. Which <laughs> actually makes more sense. <laughs> Which makes more sense. At least some of the janitors eating. Somebody's getting something. Someone's out getting of it. it. I don't know. But yeah, they. I, uh, I mean, I know some of them set up places to feed the hungry and do certain things. Yeah. But then the church also, like wh when I grew up, they would have the fair, and the fair would have gambling. Right. So you're not supposed to gamble, but then you go into there and it's people getting drunk, which is just glutton. It's like all the seven deadly sins are going on, but yeah. it's perfectly acceptable because the church is getting a bunch of cash. Yeah, it's like, uh, like I've shot craps in the parking lot of a church. <laughs> I've, I've played blackjack <laughs> yeah. in a church parking lot. Yeah, under a tent. Because it was a church event. It's like the purge for them, right. I guess. They give one day where you could just go bat shit. Yeah, there's... Uh, <laughs> like the purge. You could gamble, fuck whores. Yeah. I don't know. And then the next day, it's like, no, this is a parking lot for the church. Yeah, there's just a fucking trailer set up. Bunch of whores yeah. in there. One, You see one torn king of clubs <laughs> in the parking lot just as a reminder of the, the debauchery that transpired <laughs> the day before. Ah, proof. But it's every night. And yeah. And you just have kids on rides, carnies. Yeah. And carnies are just staring at every little girl who's getting on oh, the ride. They the would priests always... are getting jealous. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't look at That's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, you can keep the girl. Right. Take Bring those icky girls. <laughs> yeah. Keep the two caged in the zipper ride and we'll get them later. <laughs> Tell them you just <laughs> yeah. can't get them out. Tell them you just let them ride for as long as they want. <laughs> yeah. They'll stick around. <laughs> Just keep saying, I can't hear you until they pass out. <laughs> uh, it's just awful. Oh, can't wait. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's why I just don't trust so many. And I, again, like I do believe in a higher power. I honestly do. I just have such a problem with organized religion. Yeah, Believe yeah, it, do, it doesn't, it makes no sense. If you really, as an intelligent person, look back uh, to when all of these religions were started, except, you know, Scientology, uh, right. back in ancient times and the, the Bible and all of these books that have these stories that people don't realize are just supposed to be representative of other things. What do they call those? Um, well, uh, a, uh, a metaphor. They're all metaphorical stories. Like a whale didn't really eat a guy. You well, know? And there's also even down to, you know, people will ask, why are there bunnies on Easter? And it's like, well, that's because it was the pagan holiday of fertility. Oh. Rabbits have sex all the time to create it. 
and that's why there's that a bunny on Easter sense. because it was originally something else. And if you break down uh, all the prophets, whether it's Buddha or uh, Muhammad, Muhammad or Jesus or whoever it is, these are all very similar people hmm. from, the, you know, very similar. Like, uh, yeah, even yeah. Buddha was a, a, a prince who gave up everything and went out. You know, there's so many. Not food. No, but, you know, there's also Jesus was king. My 600-pound prophet. <laughs> Big fat Buddha got his stomach stapled. So I got stung by a bee. Yeah, yeah. You, Buddha, you're going to die if you don't listen to me and get this operation. You got to lose 50 pounds by the next time you come in, or we're not going to give Buddha the surgery. Is this bag of rice? <laughs> you eat Buddha? Step up on the scale. Buddha's like, I no, I don't understand. I was paying attention to your diet. You know, you're lying to me, Buddha. <laughs> And I think if religion, Christianity, whatever it is, makes you a better person and it gets you through your day, I think ah. you should have at it. Then fine. The problem is, is I see too many people, storefront pastors, which is all Joel Osteen is. Yeah. He is a storefront pastor who got a lot of fucking people to pay attention, selling nothing more than his bullshit and hope. It's no different than a pop star getting a hit song and they be, they're the lucky one that is now famous and rich. Right. He did that with this bullshit... Uh, religion scam and I want it's you know it people talk about Fox News as if it tries to prey on you watch the 700 club and oh. try not to laugh the whole time dude I can't tell you how funny watching some of the religious that, and tragic at the same time because you know some people are just that one guy that sells the the soy sauce packet of holy water pump pop Papavani, right? Like you Papino, can get free Papa, blessed water. Popovich, yeah, Papa. It's Papa something. Stephen Papadopoulos. Papadopoulos <laughs> from Vegas, Papa. Vegas vacation. <laughs> yeah. Mister Papadopoulos is holy water, <laughs> and he sells like uh, holy water, and they tell you, you know, send away for it, and you'll get check. And all the people are just talking about how much cash they got. Like that's what his job is: is to be the in between between God and you, so God could send you money. The, the the golden fucking calf, the the root of all evil, the all that and 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 he's your in between to God for money. It's so blatantly dishonest and criminal. Well, because people also they associate uh, religion and I shouldn't even say religion, but this idea of freedom and a free spirit and that yeah. sort of thing are free to do by money. Like the and it's a it's a crazy thing. Yeah, that they that money is such this. It plays so huge into something where Jesus was not about cash. No. Uh, priests no. have to take a vow of poverty, for example. Like, there's, if you learn from the Bible, it's supposed to be that it's not all about money. Yeah. But then you're looking at this guy. Like, God made man in the image of him. Mm -hmm. So why is that motherfucker got Botox? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're defacing God's work. You really are, though. Oh, my you're goodness. You're saying, hey, God, you didn't do a good yeah. enough job. I'm going to go fix the parts of me that you fucked up. Yeah, I don't like God. I don't like when you did that thing where you get old and get wrinkles and stuff. So I'm going to inject shit into my face to take all of your grand plan uh, out of my, my face. Yeah, we found an animal you created, killed it, and sucked the fucking <laughs> venom out. And then we injected it we into our We poison face. our faces so it paralyzes our muscles. Yeah, because God forbid somebody would have to look at a wrinkle. Right. I'd rather just have the same surprised look on my face until I'm laying in a casket looking like it's my birthday party. <laughs> It's uh, it, yeah, until it makes sense to me. Um, and yeah, you could have your own idea of what a deity is. I mean, obviously, people have their own uh, ideas. But like you said, the idea of organized religion, here's how it works. And it's so sanctimonious. They'll tell you, no, this is like I was saying, the Bible is full of metaphorical stories that are supposed to show you how you're supposed to live your life as a better person not you know noah's ark you can look at that and see kind of what what the idea behind it is it's not a real boat it's not a real guy with faith and animals right. and because that story just cannot happen well exactly and it's simply an idea to teach people because back then there wasn't a law yeah it's why at the same time that was happening people were in africa worshiping the sun Ah, you know, when, still well, are, but still I hear, are, yeah, but, hear yeah, tell. <laughs> I, I, but, I tweeted something out where this is two African medicine men 
because the really African medicine men. Yeah. And they have those big wooden masks on. And I'm like, even uh, even African doctors need masks. Please send them. <laughs> See, there's a big stupid mask. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> they all should wear them now. Just wear those. Just walk in, both have like a rattle. Yeah. Uh, sir, the hospital just got a shipment of masks from Africa. Oh, good. I don't care where they're from. That's and right. then they just have to go around with <laughs> witch wooden. doctor masks, <laughs> wooden masks. <laughs> just ah. comes in, does a little dance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll be fine. Shake this around there you. There you go. A little rattle. I prescribe uh, three shakes of a rattle yes. and a thumping of a spear. Uh, you should be fine. I'll be back. We're going to bring you some uh, the brains of people that have died in the rainforest. Right. <laughs> Take this little drum and uh, beat on it if you want to call me. <laughs> it really is that, though, because it all comes... That's the problem is it all comes down to the dollar. Yeah. The yeah. almighty dollar. But that's Can my, I have another uh, bud, please? That's my issue with politics as well, is you're not going to get anything done, and you're not going to put across a message of complete positivity mm -hmm. if it's all about one guy making a bunch of cash. Yeah. It can't be. It, and it always is. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, It always boils down to money, money, money. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe if you're running a place and, and you need money to feed people, so you, you do so. But, but the second you start bilking people, and and being dishonest with them to get the money, uh, then you, you're you're negating everything you're supposed to be believing in with uh, that religion. So it absolutely is that. I uh, I was never big on it, uh, even as a kid. It frightened me, well, which guilt. I guess it was supposed to. Thank you, Keith. Well, yeah, they have a guy who's you know emaciated to his ribs, dangling from a bloody cross. Yeah, yeah. And it's like that guy is why you're here, and you're like, all yeah. right, I don't wanna. I thought like the holy water when you walked in was was some magical shit. Oh, I did that, too. Like you couldn't touch. If, if if I saw the adults doing that, dip it in, and they do the sign of the cross and everything, and I'm like, no, if you touch that shit and you're not serious, it, it'll burn your fingers off. Yes. I really thought there was magic going on in church. Fucking magic. The priests were these. They weren't people. They were these things that this religious thing and. And they weren't to be looked at or talked to like people. Well, they were a vessel of God's yeah. voice. Yeah, it was scary when I was a kid. I didn't like any of it. The the big churches and the the horrible, like that Jesus that was on the cross kind of looking at you yeah, this, sideways, giving you the old stink eye. Yeah, this. The <laughs> it was scary. He's nailed up there. You're a kid. I don't know what the fuck. You got a man nailed up somewhere. It's frightening well, to me. That's it's like what, a horror then, movie. Well, and then they tell you we're going to eat his body and drink his blood. Oh, good, that good. That was even weirder. After my uncle took me to go see that fucking movie, uh, I drink your blood, <laughs> I eat your flesh. It was frightening. And then, yeah, they're letting everybody drink out of the same cup. So all of a sudden, oh, I, good. I guess they stopped that because, you know, herps. Now we get the, I, I got the 1972 coronavirus. But there's this idea that you can do whatever you want amongst a lot of Catholics where it's like, be as shit as you want, apologize on Sunday, rinse yeah. and repeat. Right. And that's not the idea. You have to learn from your mistakes and then live without making them constantly. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're supposed to. You're not supposed to use it as kind of a, um, a, a wipe the slate clean thing, knowing you're going to be a piece of shit until you do it again right. next time. And, and that's why when people pray uh, for something because they need it, you might as well just go to the wishing well. Well, that's what you're doing. Yeah, you're going to the wishing well. People, if you pray for something, I think, and will it into your brain, you know, yeah. that's something that you want that is something about that you can achieve from inside you. Like you becoming a radio host or doing any, like something yeah. somebody wants to do, become a comic, whatever, will inside you, maybe you pray for that, sure. Mm -hmm. But when you're praying to like win the lot, you're just being a piece of shit. Yeah. You're using it as a wishing well. A wishing well. I, I, I've i heard about the power of prayer and how people pray for somebody and they do get better. Sure, uh, that some as opposed to all sight and there's no way to explain it. I, I, I think there is a way to explain it. I, I believe that if somebody... Uh, has people around them that care enough about that person to pray for them that they've led a life that might be a little healthier you know sure. they're not a piece of shit. i think there is a physical thing to it of how you you led your life it's like these statistics that say a family that has dinner together every night uh 
has a better relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not the dinner. It's the fact that you're willing to have dinner together. So if a right. shitty family that hates each other sits down to dinner, it's not going to make them like each other more because it's not the dinner. The dinner no. is part of the <laughs> overall picture where you enjoy each other's company. That's true. And you're living a good family life. and, and that have, So a lot of times they make these things, they turn them backwards. And I think the prayer thing is you're just better as a person. Maybe your, your, your mind is healthier and that way you know the mind and body obviously connected sure. so that if people are praying for you 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 put more credence in it personally and and it just helps your body right. more so i think there are physical aspects to it that have nothing to do with magic man in the clouds well, think, that you're talking to i think subconsciously if you believe something enough that there is a chance for a miracle to happen like there's a chance for something to change if you believe it so much yeah because there's just like we talked about it the other day like if you had to control your lung functions and talk to me you'd die you'd be dead there's something deeper or inside you wouldn't of talk it. to anybody you just kind of go yeah. in out <laughs> or the guy who got brained and still oh, like, you know i mean there's newspaper. there's more working in here than you're aware of right so there is a possibility that maybe something can be cured if you really truly believe it yeah but at the same time, it's by with religion, you just at least modern religion, it's never about that. It never seems to be about the greater good. It's why the no. Vatican is paved with gold. It's designed to bring you in at a very young age and to scare you into believing it. Right, and, right. Yeah. And I never understood when I was young why God's so insecure. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he wants me to pray to him all the time and he thank him. He needs your love. What is like, he, a why? comic? What an asshole comic. <laughs> Apparently he is. <laughs> it, 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 that is so funny because, yeah, why would somebody so almighty need this these ants, these fucking bugs uh, that he threw all over a, a rock in, in, in the void? Why would he need them to constantly worship and praise? And it's so fucking self-centered like yeah and if you uh, like the only thing i've ever created is my son you know yeah it's like you would never unleash how'd you do that yeah a uh, little bit of fucking nice yeah fucked it, fucked him it, it, into, into my wife <laughs> and then she gave birth to him through her puss they're so easy to make yeah they god really uh Went off the rail. That's another uh, yeah, one. Yeah, made a little too easy to make those things. But, like, I wouldn't unleash locusts onto them, is my point. If yeah. If did something wrong, like they do in the early Testament, it's like, fuck, you're mad. Yeah. You're just going to fucking burn down cities, and it's all about wrath. And then you get to part two, and it's like, Jesus is like, hey, let's be cool with each other. Yeah. And then part three is uh, these ancient Jews buried a book in upstate New York. <laughs> so ridiculous. But Utah, fucking... Salt Lake City. Like, Jesus was a cowboy in the 1800s. Yeah. And what? <laughs> like the idea of loving, compassion, caring about other people is a good thing. I mean, that's the re it's the reality. And it's I think I that is, again, something that is hardwired in humans. It's got to be even in, in some of the most primitive prehistoric times where you just knew it wasn't right to walk up to somebody and cave their fucking head in. Absolutely. L like, like there had to be this primal, instinctual part of, of humans early on that knew there was just, that wasn't right. If someone's trying to get your wife or, or your kids or your food, yeah, you cave his fucking head in. Of but course. just to walk up to someone and cave their fucking head but in. But that person is going against what's natural. That person yeah. is attacking you, and then you have to defend. You're doing what's natural. Still. But I think all that that religious stuff, the Ten Commandments kind of thing, is the stuff that's inherent in relatively good people. Yes. We, it, it's just what you knew. And if they want to make it seem, and I think the Ten Commandments thing is metaphorical also, in that God put those in you just making you a person so if you believe a higher entity made us he made us and put these rules in our head and they're not so much these rules that were written out and given to you it's just the way we're built and what was hardwired in our head our original rom memory that says there's a part of us that says that's yeah. not the right thing to do yes it's a transcription of our own morality right our own morality and did God put that in you? Well, if you believe God made people, then you do. Then that's God's rules. Okay, I could see how that would 
kind of wash with some people, but it's not so much, you can't just teach someone that, it's, it's inherent. Yeah, it's it really is, and it's funny to show how dated it is because they have changed over time. Yeah, and of course, well, certain different cultures, different people will bastardize it and yeah. tell you that that's it. But even then, you know, I know what is in my head as far as morality goes, and I know what's been taught to me or told to me what morality is supposed to be. Yeah, and sometimes they don't mix. Well, Norm had a great bit on that. How it was like, "Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's yak." or whatever it was in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he's like, you know, some of these Ten Commandments are real hard to follow, especially that whole not covering thy neighbor's yak. I mean, my neighbor's got this gorgeous yak. <laughs> yeah. Every time I'm walking by, I just think about how beautiful that yak is, getting filled with jealousy. You know, it <laughs> changes over time. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, it means basically saying, hey, if you get married, don't fuck around. Yeah. If, uh, don't, try not to kill people. That's the main Yeah, one. yeah. He almost gives you other laws so you just don't kill anybody. Right. Most he, of them lead up yeah. to don't kill He's people. He's like, try not to steal shit, but hey, just so you know, under $10, we're all right with it or whatever. The yeah. Because I believe they did say that the $20 worth of thievery is then a hell-worthy trespass. Really? Yeah, they, I believe that the Catholic Church put $20. There's a, a price on it. I believe it's 20 Monetary price. Is that uh, Does that change with inflation? I hope so. <laughs> Because I hope it's changed with twenty dollars years time. ago and twenty dollars now is a very different thing. And I could never steal now, but I when I was, you know, twelve and jamming CDs into my fucking pants at Sam Goody. As long I, as it was under twenty bucks, they usually were at the time. They were about eleven. Candy. I used to steal candy and baseball cards, and maybe a magazine uh, from the uh, from the stationery store. But then if somebody's hungry and needs to feed their kid and they run in and, um, I don't know, they manage to steal $20 worth of food. Right. Is that bad? Is that bad? Are you just, bad. are you now using the, the reason as justification for your thievery? Uh, it makes sense. It seems like a noble thing that you're doing. You're not buying drugs with it. You're feeding a kid that, that was hungry. So, you know, does God look down at that and say, well... I understand. Don't you sweat it. I'm going to write down that you now have a credit line with me over $20. Yeah, like God's got to look at the individual person if you have an, a relationship yeah, with God. Yeah, and there's God, so many people. And there's got to be loopholes instead of these literally in stone commandments that right. can in no way be breakable. Yeah, and the fact that it's written in stone. Yeah, like, it, no one sees that as metaphorical. Right. You think a guy really came down fucking Moses the Ten Commandments, like everything that it, 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 the story tells you, you can say, all right, I get it. Written in stone, Ten Commandments. God brought you these laws. Yeah, he made you with them already in there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're so hardwired in. Yeah, I, I get that part of it. But we've turned it into the invisible man in the clouds is God. And he does things. Uh, a god, an entity, a, a holy fucking whatever, is whatever you think it is. It's whatever, wherever we came from, which is one of the great mysteries. Uh, but they turned it into this easy-to-read storybook shit and treat it like th it's literal, and that's gotten so many people in trouble. It's created wars. It, you know, people have died well, over yeah, these storybooks. You're fighting over whose transcription of the story. Right, of the is, fake story. Is, and which one of you, <laughs> like the, <laughs> which one of your uh, sky friends is the right one? Right. Which one of your magic, magical, mystical people in the clouds <laughs> is the right one? I just hope it's not any of the weird ones. When oh, you die, God. Where you're like, is it really? I got to talk to this guy. That's why I think L. Ron Hubbard was brilliant. To just go, yeah, I don't care. It's fucking 1950, whatever it is. I'm just going to make my own story up. Well, yeah, just I'm going to make my own fucking story up. And wh why is mine any less... Uh, uh, wh why would you put any less credence in my story as this old fucking story from the Bible? Yeah. Well, and it's the same as the pyramid scheme that's uh, when you become a Mormon. Yeah. I mean, that happened where it was in upstate New York. Then they ended up in Salt Lake City. Right. And it's a pyramid scheme where they go out and sell it all the way to the top where there's the guy who talks to the Lord. And you know by the time you hit that point in it, you're like, oh, I don't really talk to him? Yeah, wait a minute. What happened? 
And it's like, well, I'll just go confer with Jesus in my office. Yeah. Well, before the jig was up with Scientology and the info got out about Xenu and all oh, that, yeah. people would work toward that top of the pyramid, the yeah. pinnacle, a it fuckload was... of money and time, and then they would get to the, the that moment and go, wait, what? No, on, <laughs> online, they would tell you it's $400,000 to find out that Xenu is the, and it just tells you the money amount that's spent yeah, yeah. and the information you get. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're in this place where they're abusing you. Oh, they're blackmailing you. They're taking video of your confessions. Like they would do that auditing, they call it, where you hold on to the, the two cans and, and there's a little gauge. It's some silly fucking machine. And, you know, someone like John Travolta goes in there and it's all being recorded. And some an auditor gives you questions, you answer them, and you're supposed to get down to a certain level of thetans and stuff yeah. it's a, this convoluted complex thing but as you're being interviewed they're asking you very personal embarrassing questions you're answering them honestly and you're being recorded the whole time so they then have that if you go you know hey uh, fuck this scientology all right uh, they're gonna go uh, oh yeah. fuck us no how about fuck you you homo yeah exactly. we got all that shit about you blowing your masseuse and everything yeah. you want that out there all right, all right, how much for yeah, the next session? Another 100. All right, look, I'm bored with it, all well, right? And my friend Justin was raised in Scientology in the beginning. Really? And it, Yeah, his, his mom escaped with him. They were then kidnapped and held in Mexico for a little while by people involved. With they, Scientology? Yeah, yeah, they yeah were able a lot to of kidnapping escape, going yeah, on. Yeah, they were able to escape them. Because he told me all about this, and this is 15 years ago when I met him at Second City, and he, he told me the whole story because I, I was very unfamiliar with it. Yeah. And he said that his dad stayed in and, you know, they have this hush rule where you're not allowed to ever speak to him again. Yeah. So he said ever since they left and they were able to break free and go to the police, and whatever, he has not spoken to his father. Yeah, they call it shunning or banishing yeah. or one of those things like they have with the Amish and things like that. But, yeah, if it, you're supposed to be cut off from anybody that doesn't buy into the, the fucking religion. The utter, utter bullshit. Well, yeah. Look at... Uh, Tom Cruise and his poor wife, Katie Holmes, was just finally like, I think I can get over that fence. Yeah, like yeah. One day. I'm she making just, a break for it. <laughs> Fuck she, this. She hadn't been in movies in years. Yeah. She And even when she's talked about it, it's so creepy how it was like set up and she had to meet him and there's like acting roles involved. Like, very fucked up. And Everyone's I like freaked Cruise. out about it. Like yeah. when they when they get it. Tom Cruise is one of those guys, though, where you look and go, maybe there's something to that. Well, the yeah. motherfucker is just a successful movie after successful movie. He looks like he did fucking decades ago. Oh, yeah. And and he's doing amazingly well. He looks younger than he was in Taps. It's crazy. And he's <laughs> yeah. 60. He's fucking pushing <laughs> 60, and he's doing action movies, doing his own stunts. He's yeah. yeah, so, you know. Who knows? But, I mean, uh, even Will Smith, and I've had yeah, looking guy. Yeah, Will Smith, in his same 50s, thing. He's what in the great fuck? shape. I don't get it. They <laughs> must. Those are their like. Those are their put out front, as, as you know. Come on in, be a Scientologist. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that are just pieces of shit. Well, and they're making Travolta's wigs and doing anything. Yeah, they yeah, can. Travolta's wigs. They didn't realize it was gonna fall apart the way that it did. <laughs> the uh, uh, the thing, social media really destroyed Scientology. Uh, mass communication when when uh, earlier in in Scientology 70s 80s even into the 90s they they really couldn't you couldn't bash them they they had a legal team that would go after you if you said anything about Scientology well and power in Hollywood they yeah had massive power in Hollywood. huge yeah. because a lot of them were Scientologists and they would uh, they would go after you lawyers and and uh, thugs would go after you if you said anything about it, about Scientology. Then with social media and mass media, more people were able to start criticizing it. Ex-members would come forward and say things, and they just couldn't find that many lawyers and lawsuits and stuff to cover it up. And then the dam just burst, and, and so many of these people, like uh, Leah Remini... Well, and came she out and said, even, holy fuck, this is a, one of the most fucked up things. And she got into it through the influence of Hollywood. And even in the beginning um, of her, I want to say it was that A&E series, mm -hmm. it says, like, it's more legal mumbo jumbo than any other show. It's oh, like, yeah. this may just be her opinion. Blah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they got to really. But then they interview her and everybody else involved in the church, and it's so eerie. Like, And you can tell that even being filmed doing that, she's terrified. Yeah, yeah, because... Like, 
They know that they will send people out to follow you, videotape you, blackmail you, your family. Like the, w- one of the former thugs is on her show. Yeah. Like the guy with the English accent. I can't remember his name, but he's one of those guys that would go out and video people and intimidate them and and uh, uh, go with lawyers. And, and now he's an anti-Scientology guy, and it's fascinating to hear his stories because he's got from the top where they gave him orders to fuck with people's lives. Well, and it's interesting because I remember the church there when I lived there. This is uh, a long time. This is like 2002, maybe. And they... They talked about on that show how they would get a little rough sometimes with people walking by or trying to bring them in or whatever, Uh like a little physical. (laughs) And I remember that shit, though. I remember them being people outside being a little, like, shouldery. Yeah, yeah. And and it was people all involved. Because that... It's a gang. You can find it. There's one in Harlem as a Scientology center, which is so weird. But the actual church, have you seen it in Hollywood? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's insane. Like, yeah. Like, even if you see it on TV, you don't grasp the magnitude of the size of that fucking no, thing. No, when you walk down, I, I don't know which street it is. I want to say Wilshire, but, but I could be wrong. But you're just looking at, like, it's the street going, I think, intersecting with the street it's on. Yeah. But you turn a corner and you just see the, the fucking... It's the Emerald City. Yeah, Emerald nowhere. City, yeah. yeah. It's so all eerie. gold ornate and uh, yeah, it's so eerie. And you just look at that and go, "That's them taking people's money." Yeah, that costs a lot. Building this monstrosity, and even when I drive by it in heart, yeah, like yeah, look don't at really, that. It, it's insane. It looks like a resort. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just in the middle of Hollywood, which, if you're not familiar, is not. Like New York, it's not these big buildings. No, no, it stands out. It's it really stands out. This monstrosity in the middle of this area. And yeah. I don't mean downtown Hollywood, but it, where it's at, it's just this noticeable monstrosity. And no one knows what's going on behind all those windows. There's no. there's auditing. There's intimidation. There's blackmail. All kinds oh, of shit. There's physical abuse. Physical abuse. They had that C thing. The um. Uh, where where it's like their navy, yeah. <laughs> they have a fucking Scientology navy, and uh, they they exile people to that when they fuck up. They go, yeah, you're you're going to San Diego and going to this sea thing, uh, and you end up on a boat scrubbing the deck, not talking to anybody, completely cut off from the world for years. <laughs> like you disappear. And they have a a pit or whatever it was they were showing in her thing where like if you're punished or trying yeah. to escape basically you're taken locked in a, you know sort of the um, Kevin Bacon and murder in the first <laughs> yeah. and then you're you're per, the person you're there with your significant other isn't going to leave and no, leave no. you there and then a lot of times slowly the kids would notice the banks just getting drained by the very same company yep. the accounts going down and down and down and down it's a it's, cult yeah it well it very much is a the, fucking the f- cult the fact that it hasn't been stopped is so bizarre to me and it has tax exempt status as a religion how that happened i have it's beyond me it it, you, no you just can just make up your own fucking religion i think oh the sea yeah. org that was it the sea org salutes you Look at these fucking mental pit. Like they're in the Navy. They should have to fight in every war. Oh, yeah. Send the Sea Org. And they just brainwash the enemy to join Scientology. Yeah, all of a sudden it's just... (laughs) It's just a bunch of brainwashed people going, oh, I'm almost at the top. Yeah, this is good. 